Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris from kicksoncourt.com. Today we have a performance review on the Nike Air Max Actualizer 2. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So these guys here have full length herringbone and this is like super aggressive herringbone, which I absolutely love. Uh, this is perfect for any court, any you know condition, um, indoors, outdoors, really doesn't matter. Being that these are priced under the $100 mark as well, makes these a really good option, especially from the bottom. This reminds me a lot of the Zoom Kobe 4. So most of the cushion on this shoe is coming from the heel, the Air Max unit. This is actually the same exact setup as the um, uh, Nike Air Max stutter step. So up front, nothing except for Phylon, and then right here you have maximum impact protection at the heel. This type of setup is great for larger players or heavy set players, people with a lot of rebounding or heel strikes. Um, forefoot cushion being missing though is not great for someone like myself who plays primarily on their forefoot, such as a guard or even a smaller forward. However, these guys are fairly priced, so um, you know, add in an extra ten or twenty dollars even for uh, you know a cushioned insole, or if you even have one um, already, then you could just put it in here, and you have forefoot cushion right off the bat. So the materials in these guys are a um, split grain leather on the back and the front. And it feels okay. It's got a thicker PU coat so it's a little hard to break in. As you can see it's kind of bubbled up and everything. Um, it's not anything that you know I complain about you know, being on court, but uh, it does require a little bit extra break in time, so just keep that in mind. And then on the lateral side panel we have first generation flywire. And then on the medial side, it looks like flywire, but this is actually faux flywire, which I thought was kind of strange. It's a little little cheap, just to be perfectly honest. Um, I think that this shouldn't have these lines on there. I, I Personally, I just think that this is a really awkward looking uh, piece. It should just be a straight synthetic or fuse, or it should just be leather. Um, not trying to mimic flywire, just have flywire on one side and just call it a day. As far as how everything performs uh, with the materials, again, a little bit extra break in time up front, especially since it's a, a thicker coated leather. Um, everything else though, fairly lightweight. It's a surprisingly lightweight shoe if you have it in hand. It looks a little bulky, but it doesn't feel that way. And um, it's very strong materials as well. So if you're looking for something durable, again, for this price point, it's a pretty good buy. As far as their fit goes, from the midfoot back, perfect lockdown, zero complaints. This guy though, in the forefoot, it's a little bit wide and I had a little bit of dead space. Again, you could see how tightly I was trying to get these up just so that my foot wouldn't slide inside and I uh, ended up causing the materials to buckle a little bit. Um, that's something that is just, a, I guess, a personal problem. So if you have a somewhat narrow or normal foot, uh, this might have that type of issue for you. However, if you're a wide footer, this might fit you perfectly. As far as ventilation goes, uh, most of that's coming from this tongue, which isn't very ventilated as it is, so not too much there. Um, you do have some perforations at the toe box, which is a good point for it to be at, because uh, that's where a lot of your heat is coming out of your foot, so it's allowing that to escape. And then you have a little section here on each of the uh, fuse or fly wire pieces, and it doesn't really do much, but it is there, so I figured I'd just kind of point it out. Same with this guy. Uh, no real ventilation from here back um, is necessary. Mostly the top of the foot and the toe box is where you want to focus on and that's kind of where they do so um, it's not the best ventilation and um, again ventilation with a sloppy forefoot fit is going to cause for some moving inside the shoe and you also will probably get some blisters so double socket um, if possible. As far as support is concerned, that's mostly coming from that fit. So from the midfoot back, you get plenty of support along with that fly wire piece here, uh, keeping your foot locked into the footbed. The forefoot, again, sloppy. I wish it was a little bit more narrow. And inside at the shank, there should be a small TPU shank bar. I'm not positive, but I'm almost positive that there is one in there for torsional support. And then you also have this nice wide and flat base along with the outrigger support. All right, everybody, that pretty much takes care of everything. If you're interested in this sneaker, you can grab them now over at finishline.com. Direct link is going to be in the description box below. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all your support, and until next time, guys, have a good one.